Hi friends. So I know I'm hardly the first person to do this, but <clears throat> I took a 3D print that had sort of quote unquote failed and I cut it to make a cross section. And then I took the piece that I was really interested in and put it on my microscope so that I could hopefully um, see what was going on at the magnification level here. Now this is a fairly weak magnification, but already you can see the fundamental limitations and difficulties of trying to create a watertight or airtight surface using additive 3D printing. This is PLA, and it's uh, the super cheap, ultra low quality PLA. That was 4x magnification. Now I'm gonna switch to 10x and uh, it's kind of even more enlightening hopefully we can get the focus right here so yeah you, I mean it's like a Grand Canyon in there pretty much you can almost see where the um, cracks between the layers I don't know what to call it a crack is kind of inaccurate but you know, the space between the layers where they didn't quite fuse is pretty huge, presumably, and as I noticed through actually um, testing it out in the field, that the water and air both escape through that seam, even though, and this, this is what was really interesting to me, if you look on the other side of the cross section there's no seam on the inner layer which is kind of interesting so the uh, slicer is pretty smart that it puts the seam on one side but the inner seam is in a different spot however it doesn't seem to make a difference somehow just because the layers don't completely bond which was clearly visible on the microscope that water and air is still able to travel through those tiny gaps because air molecules and water molecules are really small and uh, compromise the integrity of the print. And uh, I did a bunch of research on this because this was a new phenomenon to me, although not to a lot of veteran 3D printers. And apparently you can do a bunch of different things to solve this problem. You can, probably the easiest m method, most reliable one that I read is you can spray on a, um, a clear lacquer or varnish, spray it on the inside and outside of your print that you want to be waterproof and air airtight. Um, that's the easiest method that you can um, anneal, which is quite a bit more complicated by like packing the print in a fine uh, thermally stable material like super powdered salt and then heating it in an oven so that it causes all the layers to fuse really tightly together that's something I'm not going to be trying for me what I'm going to do on one of these um, other <coughs> couplings that I have here what I'm going to do is just go along the seams with super glue, do kind of like a spot um, patch, and see if that will that will work. Um, so yeah, the journey continues as usual. It's like as you would expect with something totally new that you're trying to do something that hasn't necessarily been done in this specific way before you're going to encounter some some issues so yeah that's my next uh experiment i'm going to see see if that works hey right, here we go okay wow look at that So, just that simple coating of super glue. 
along the seam dramatically reduce the amount of leakage between those layers before it was along the whole seam now there's just three spots it looks like that it's coming out of this one's the most dramatic I don't know if you can see those <clears throat> water droplets or not. I'm trying to get it to focus. Let me reposition the camera a little. Yeah, so pretty, pretty interesting. I can see how spraying on a clear varnish or lacquer layer would probably completely solve the problem. However, the thing is, like, <clears throat> I'm trying to make this practical, and the truth of the matter is, it doesn't really seem like it is practical to me, at least uh, as someone who has been doing irrigation for a long time, and farming, and is extremely water conscious, for me, just a tiny little leak like that, even a pinhole, a couple drops... It's too much. I have like zero tolerance for leaks. Uh, so it doesn't really seem practical at the moment. Maybe in the future when there's some more advanced 3D printing techniques. Uh, which reminds me, um, something else I wanted to mention here. <clears throat> when I modified the model in the attempts to hopefully make it <clears throat> even more leak proof I went back and I added an additional layer of uh, filament on the outside to make the walls thicker and then on the inside I actually made little um, little uh, thick spacers behind the um, the support structure parts because that was one of the suggestions that people had was making the wall sticker to help make it water and airtight but that didn't really seem to have any effect so that's something interesting I thought just to mention so yeah the saga continues I'm gonna release this model to the wild and uh, let other people play around with it for a bit. So, thanks for watching.